about, which would just be a real quick down the road. I am a teacher in your local public school district in terms of I substitute teach. I've been in every high school. I've been in the middle school. Um, I've taught for over 30 years. I'm a parent. I have grown kids, a firefighter in the district, military, computer software engineer. Nobody's had a problem with understanding what their gender is. I would like to understand from each of you what is your, if you have a background in education as an administrator, if you've ever been in a classroom as a substitute teacher, as a teacher. Um, and then I'm also curious if any of you have a, a law background, um, an attorney background. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, sure. Yeah, we're going that way. Oh, okay. that's the first answer. Uh, I appreciate your question. My name's Adam Rurick, uh, and I, I will tell you, after 26 years in, in law enforcement, uh, I re I'd rather be shot at than be a substitute teacher. <laughs> so my hat goes off to you for your service. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I did put in my time in, in the Parent Band Boosters organization. And for eight years, I helped out the uh, boosters and the children go from band competition to band competition and uh, so I had some interaction with teachers on a regular basis um, as far as law background goes uh, I don't have a law degree um, and I don't plan on playing one on TV either but I will tell you that uh, when I was teaching new officers it was amazing and also frightening to me when I would sit in or stand in front of a classroom of 20 new hires and ask them if they understood what the Constitution was and what the, the amendments were, you know, the Fourth Amendment, the Eighth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, and I had blank stares. And when I started talking to them about how, how the structure of our government is and, and who has authority over different branches, both federally and state-wise, they still had a blank stare. So. Um, you know, I really had to educate myself uh, and go through so that I could teach them about how our country is supposed to work. Um, so that's that's my experience on on law. I, I'm very I'm, I'm pretty well coached on it um, because I was our senior instructor as far as that goes. And there was another part of your question. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mark Sauter. My experience for teaching and training is in the fire service. I was a training captain, a training chief. So I trained, I don't know, I would guess over my career, a couple of hundred different people. Um, certainly a, a number of firefighters in all kinds of emergency procedures. I have no law experience and I try and stay, my, stay away from that and learn, read, do all of that. But I'm very careful about where I want to put my foot down on a, on a lawyer's spot. So my daughter is a prosecuting attorney in Massachusetts, so I guess I have a little bit of counsel that's just a phone call away, but I stay out of that generally. Thank you. Um, my name is Travis Thompson for uh, Representative Seat 1A. So I don't have any uh, legal background. I'm a general contractor and I've uh, had another business here. Um, but. Two, three of my children went to uh, all the way through the school system and I was involved through that process the whole time. So communicating with the teachers and uh, um, just understanding how that worked. Two of them went to the charter school and one of them went to the high school. So I really appreciated that, um, you know, just having those choices and seeing, you know, having the choices there that allows teachers to move to environments that that suit what they're uh, interested in, and and you know why one size fits all all doesn't work, and we're we're really diverse as a community, and we should have that same th uh, through our school system. I've taught, uh, I've been asked to, to to talk or to schools, you know, on, on a professional sense to kind of get kids involved in general contracting and understanding things like that. I know it's really boring, but they got a lot out of it. So I do, uh, I have done uh, that, volunteered to uh, offer those to, you know, help people understand how their, their buildings and their lives interact with the environment. Anyway, that's boring stuff, but I'm, I really appreciate the, the teachers and what they do. 
and you know communicated with them to to see how to improve that uh, is it's a teacher link to the to the school that's the most important function of that whole process I appreciate it thanks for asking that I have 53 years of education experience in private public charter home schools and my own school that was in Kauai I have an undergraduate degree including a teaching certificate along with my math and science and political science and the I have four majors anyway I have my masters in teaching I also have certification in teaching gifted and talented and as I said there is a way to make all this happen and it's not going to happen just with the legislature. It can't be done alone. We have, as has been said, powerful money and influences that are not elected positions in our country. And they are wagging our government. And it can be stopped. And I will not stop trying, whether I'm elected or not, until there is not a breath in my body. And we have to, and I've also taught, um, here in, um, in the same district, I've seen you over at the schools, I, until I was hit by lightning and, and our house burned down, I was teaching every day and mostly pretty much every day. I only wanted to do it part time. However, I was in classes in every single school in our district, every single one. And I can tell you that there are some fine teachers, and I can tell you there are some really fine teachers who have quit because they refuse to teach things that are against everything that we all know as parents and as, and as Christians and as grandparents. We don't want that happening. We also don't want our children having to leave the state and leave North Idaho. So I'm also fighting for the rights of people at Northern Idaho College to be able to have vocational stuff and clean up that mess and I'm waiting for my FOIA request to be answered. Thank you. And I'm Scott Herndon running for State Senate District 1. I'll talk about my education background first and uh, I'm probably going to surprise a few people here. We'll see how many knew this about me. Well number one I attended the public schools from 1972 to 1981. I think I got that right. Anyway, then I went to Missouri Military Academy, so I've also had private school student experience, and then I attended and graduated from Arizona State University, public university, with a degree in finance. But here's the thing you probably don't know about me. I actually used to work for the Los Angeles County Office of Education, which is the largest service agency for all of the LA County public schools, which I don't even know how many students that is, but I think maybe Chicago's was bigger. I had an interesting experience there. We implemented a huge financial system for public education, and we did it. I was a consultant. I wasn't in charge of the whole project. The agency managed to implement it for twice as much money as most of the private corporations I worked for implemented the same system. And then after they implemented it for twice as much money, they managed to retain departments that were made obsolete by the new system because of unions that kept those departments in place. So they kept performing the same function, costing taxpayer money for no use whatsoever. Now, I also implemented a financial system at the University of California, Berkeley. And between Berkeley and the Los Angeles Public Schools, I actually had four and a half years experience in those environments. And I'm an extreme conservative coming out of all that. Now, my legal background is I'm excellent at Google foo. <laughs> but seriously, uh, I, Sage has run uh, some, uh, at least one bill of mine, and Heather Scott has run several bills of mine. I actually have an aptitude for understanding the law. And I've gotten several, two of my bills were signed into law by Governor Little, passed unanimously, Democrats included amazingly enough and several of my bills have cleared the Idaho House and were stymied at various levels in the Senate so I'm an expert at how people kill bills in the Idaho Senate thank you very much <laughs> well Scott I feel like a dunce now <laughs> um, I ma'am I have never taught children but I taught um, 
few thousand of them the scriptures in the prison system, and a lot of them behave like children. And by the grace of God, um, a bunch of them accepted Jesus Christ throughout those four or five years in the system. Uh, I don't I'm, I don't carry a bar card, but I have more trial experience than most attorneys. <laughs> In fact, uh, the attorney I sat next to, who wasn't my attorney, actually handed me his bar card many times. He said, you're doing a pretty good job. You should be an attorney. I said, you're out of your mind. I know I have nothing to do with this the rest of my life. So that's about my experience. Thank you. I'm not a teacher. My mother was a teacher. I've had an opportunity to teach speech and debate. I've, I've coached children at camps about government and, and things like that. So I have a little bit of experience in the classroom in doing that. Regarding the state, I've served on multiple, I was on the education committee my first term as a homeschool dad, I should say that. So we homeschooled all our children. I've got a doctor, I had a Marine who's now back in college. I've got three in college still, and my little girl's a fantastic opera singer here at the conservatory um, in doing that. So I served on the interim committee on public school funding for three years and trying to really rework our funding formula. School choice is imperative. Education is paramount in what we do with it in this state, but school choice is imperative. Nonetheless, it's only maybe 20-25% of people that will go into that, into school choice. So we still need a very robust system that we're required to do constitutionally, but that system should be reflective of the district. The district needs to have more control because they're elected, and those elected positions need to be held more accountable to what's happening within that district. That's my view on education. I continue to work on that. I wish, actually, I was back on the Ed Committee because it is very important to me, but you get siloed when you're in certain committees in the legislature. Um, not a lawyer. I, many opportunities though to craft law through these eight years and I don't know if it's a compliment or an insult but I've had uh, Pacific Legal Foundation lawyers they're a conservative lawyer group out of DC ask me if I was a lawyer just because of the way I talk with them and things and I don't know how to take that but um, my most of my knowledge as far as a legal profession has been in crafting law through the state I'm Phil Hart I'm running for the Senate Legislative District 2 uh, as far as my education, I, I have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from the University of Utah and an MBA from the University of Pennsylvania at the Wharton School of Business. And uh, I have an uncle who was uh, the president of the Association of Christian Schools International. And uh, his five kids are all my cousins, all got PhDs or master's degrees in, in uh, education and went into uh, uh, be to work in Christian education. And so I had a lot of exposure to that family as I was growing up. I did uh, uh, spend a year in a paralegal program, and I also wrote this book on the history of the income tax. And when I was researching this book, I got kicked out of more law libraries at closing than I ever got kicked out of bars at closing. <laughs> so uh, um, my, my book has about 700 quotes and about 250 references. All, all from uh, uh, historical and legal research. Thanks. Um, yes, believe it or not, I have been a substitute teacher for um, junior high, middle school, and for actually some second graders, and um, high school also. And um, as for the teacher issue, you know, I don't believe that you need to be a teacher or to have a degree to know what's right or wrong to teach our children. And I do not believe the teachers are the problem. It's the administrators and the lobbyists and the agendas being driven by the top down that are controlling every aspect of what our teachers actually are supposed to teach. A uh, well, perfect example is uh, uh, comprehensive sex ed in our schools. Um, but I do not believe teachers are the problem. A lot of times it's the curriculum that comes with it. Um, as for law and a lawyer, no, I'm not a lawyer, but I have written law. I guess I have written part of the law because my bills have passed and become law. So um, the way our Idaho is set up is it's citizen legislatures. We're not looking for lawyers, uh, anybody, with any job. We have a school bus driver that is, she's a legislator for her district. So we look for people, I mean, it's, it's everyday citizens in Idaho that we want to write the law for Idahoans. And um, the beauty of that is law is written in Idaho pretty simple. Most of our bills are just one or two pages long, and they're, they're supposed to be in simple terms. Now, we do have some lawyers 
in the in the legislature and they complicate every single simple bill that we try to make. But um, the way it's supposed to work in Idaho is simple language for, for our law. And you if you start reading some of it, you'd be surprised how simple it really is. So thank you. Neil Hawkins, Legislative District 2, and I proudly uh, display on my rack card I am not a lawyer uh, I, I have been involved in some paralegal stuff in the past and as far as education toward educating I, I don't have any formal education but I will proclaim that my wife and I are the largest role educators in our children's lives I used to say that we homeschooled six kids she corrects me often and says that she homeschooled six kids. So I got to be the role of the administrator. So on that note, I could say that I have school and administration uh, uh, talents in those areas. And, and again, echoing these things, uh, our, our legislature is supposed to be made up of individual people from communities that, that want to step forward and stand up for the things that we believe Idaho is about. And I think that that's what needs to be heard here. This isn't about lawyers and people from high finance. At one time, our founding fathers, and I don't remember which one, they were pleading that there would be a clause that said titles of nobility and esquire could not hold office because they would keep, confuse the laws that common men and women wouldn't be able to understand anything. How are you feeling? Uh, Spencer Hutchings, LE1. Um, I did a little bit of college I kind of got bored with it and uh, quit and went and bought a business and turned it from failing to making over a million bucks in one year. So uh, college just kind of bored me. Uh, the only instruction I've done in my life is teaching people how to shoot. Uh, I've been a shooting instructor for a long time. So from little kids up to you know senior people, I just do shooting instruction. Uh, kind of like what Heather said about the bills in Idaho being just one or two pages. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I don't want to be a lawyer. I would like to hopefully when bills come through, we can pare them down so that it is one or two pages and any normal person should be able to pick up any law in Idaho and read it and understand what it means. So, hopefully that answers your question. 